operationalizing and representing conceptual variation for corpus-driven encyclopedia. The floor is yours. Yes. Ooh. Can I break it down? Hello? Is it a twisting? Could anyone give me a hand, please? Could you bring the volume down a bit? I would just write. Okay, that works. Hi, my name is Santiago Chambo. I work for the uh, Inhumator Encyclopedia. I am a member of a team of terminologists that provides conceptual description services to the Humanitarian Encyclopedia, which is, an, um, which is an, a project managed by the Geneva Center for Humanitarian Studies. And they, what they want to do, they want to study and represent 129 concepts from the humanitarian domain. Before I go on to explain what we do for them, I want to characterize the humanitarian domain. It is a very recent uh, domain. It was professionalized back in the 1990s. And it comprises around 5,000 organizations that have uh, different um, specializations, and they also have both internal and internal um, organizational um, cultural differences, but also in terms of national cultures, uh, which according to some humanitarian communication scholars, uh, the humanitarian domain suffers from what they call fragmented knowledge accumulation. That means that knowledge sits in silos within the organizations, but also within the different subdomains. Within the, uh, the do within the humanitarian domain. So um, international humanitarian law or um, emergency medicine, all the different subdomains that make up the, uh, the domain. So uh, humanitarians are aware of this and they are in this never ending quest for shared understandings. And they express this in the documents. They say that they need to reach a shared uh, understanding of humanitarian notions because they don't have it. And they list some um, benefits to this, they enables the measurement of phenomena, it guides the decision making better. So this is, the, this, this is a stage where the humanitarian encyclopedia enters and they aim to represent 129 concepts to, um, to foster that shared understanding, uh, both through a descriptive um, analysis. And this is where we enter the stage as terminologists. We provide them with conceptual analysis services uh, based on a frame-based based terminology approach. And we are currently adapting that approach to uh, meet their needs. Why do they want us to describe those concepts based on lexical data? Because they believe that due to that diversity of backgrounds, entry offers uh, may suffer from biases or content gaps when drafting those entries. And they want, they want us to complement their descriptions with lexical data facilitated by us. And they're also interested in finding out whether there are different organizations that understand humanitarian notions differently. And that is conceptual variation. Conceptual variation is a phenomenon that affects both the intentions and extensions of concepts. There are many studies about it. There are studies about how gene functions are conceptualized differently across textbooks in Europe. There are also uh, different conceptualizations of hypotheses across different uh, scientific fields and also about very you know, mundane concepts such as sport and fish. This results in highly fuzzy and highly multidimensional conceptualizations that are difficult to represent. So, um, for this case study, we've chosen four concepts of the encyclopedia, concepts that we have entries, and they are key concepts in the humanitarian domain. They are the concepts that provide a moral compass to the uh, entire domain, and those are humanity, impartiality, neutrality, and independence. They set the moral ground for the entire um, humanitarian action system. And according to some scholars, they are solidly conceptualized, but to some of us, they're not that solidly conceptualized. So it's controversial whether they are solidly conceptualized or not. And this is important because it may lead to situations, according to Abu Sada, who says that in some regions, um, especially affected populations may have, um, you know, may, may expect things from the organizations and then those situations lead to situations of uh, disappointed uh, expectations. So what are the uh, objectives of our, of our study? Uh, we want to, uh, first of all, explore a method to detect conceptual variation from textual sources because we want to facilitate also data interpretation of lexical data for, for terminologists. And we also want to improve the linguistic reporting system that we have for entry authors. And the specific objectives of our study are to determine the meaning of those concepts 
by deriving characteristics or attributes from lexical data. We also want to associate those elucidated characteristics to a typology of humanitarian organizations that we've been provided uh, with by the humanitarian um, encyclopedia. And we want to compare the distributions of characteristics across organization types to detect those possible cases of conceptual variation. And finally, we want to represent those data to identify those areas of conceptual variation and to interpret the data easily. We, we followed the um, recommendations made by Kanza and Overbeck in an interesting paper about conceptual description. And they, re they recommend that uh, we marry um, corpus linguistics with qualitative analysis uh, methodologies. Uh, they also suggest that we operationalize, com I think there's echo? No. Uh, operationalize complex concepts in, semi in semantic valid ways. We've done that by decomposition and by quantification. And they also suggest that you use data visualization uh, options that are suitable and that offer suitable disaggregation uh, solutions. So we have come up with a, with a pathway to do this. And the first step is to extract textual evidence of conceptual description in a corpus. We want to pinpoint those contexts in the corpus that describe the concepts, so evidence. And we've done so by using a corpus, the Humanitarian Encyclopedia corpus that was compiled by a team of researchers from the University of Geneva. It contains uh, around 4,800 documents, which amounts to 85 million tokens. And it contains metadata pertaining to the typology of organization that published that document. Uh, and we have that typology here. I will not go into detail, but that includes NGOs, international uh, intergovernmental organizations, such as the UN, uh, the Red Cross societies and international bodies, uh, state agencies, think tanks, religious entities. We uploaded this onto Sketch Engine to, there we go, uh, to look for definitions. So in a rather rudimentary way, we have extracted definitions using Sketch Engine with a two-pronged strategy. We've used um, verbal patterns, paralinguistic patterns, and some nouns to query the corpus using CQL queries and the landmark context filter. And we've extracted from a pool of 2,000 uh, context candidates, uh, 177 definitions. So 41 for humanity, 60 for impartiality, 37 for neutrality, and 39 for independence. These are obviously expressed in absolute uh, frequency terms. N next, what we've done is we've elucidated the characteristics um, about said concepts uh, to enable comparison between them. And for that, we've used uh, content analysis, we've used inductive coding, which enables us to look at data, openly, to look openly at those uh, definitions, and to subsume into uh, semantically comparable um, categories, semantically, sorry, lexically diverse ways to describe attributes about concepts. We will see this in a moment. So for the inducting coding uh, bit of the process, we've used TagEd, which is an open source um, qualitative analysis software. And what we've done is we've tagged differentiate from each different, uh, from each individual definition, um, according to the, to the characteristic that we have derived. So here, I'll give you four examples. We have four definitions for the concept of impartiality. I will not read them, but the first one is from an NGO. The second one is from a religious entity. The third one is from a think tank. And the fourth one is from an NGO. So we've looked at the differentiate and we've seen, oh, we can, we can group these together because they are semantically similar. If you say that providing aid according to the uh, level of suffering is similar to providing aid to people selected on the basis of need alone. So we've identified, for example, need-based assistance as an attribute of impartiality. Also, non-discrimination as an attribute of impartiality. Also, target most vulnerable people when delivering aid as an attribute of the, of the principle of impartiality. And once we have coded those 177 definitions, we have to quantify them and to determine a semantic core, which characteristics of those principles are the most prominent ones and which ones are the most marginal ones. And we have identified 13 uh, different codes, different attributes for the concept of humanity. So humanity compels humanitarians to deliver aid anywhere where it is found to alleviate human suffering to prevent it and to save human lives and the rest of attributes that we have identified, but unfortunately, I didn't have the space to put them all here. The same for impartiality, 11 attributes, four most prominent ones, eight has to be delivered in a non-discriminatory way, it has to be based on the needs of the population being assisted, it has to target the most vulnerable population, and it must prioritize um, urgencies. 11 attributes again for neutrality, 
uh, organizations should not take side in conflicts or engage in controversies or favor complex pa parties or affiliate to political parties or religious um, religious constituencies, which is rather controversial because you know there are religious entities in the field. Um, so that might pose some ch challenges ethically to, to some organizations. And then uh, the concept of independence has generated only four attributes with the principle of autonomy being the most prominent ones. Um, de delivering aid to people must be autonomous from objectives of third party organizations such as you know, political parties, uh, economy, military or other objectives. Finally, what we've done is we've consolidated those characteristics with corpus metadata pertaining to the organization types. And we've done that by combining in a rather rudimentary way with uh, Excel, uh, the metadata information from Sketch Engine with the decomposed definition from Target into one comparable differentiate uh, data set across organization types. And we've visualized it and disaggregated it uh, according to uh, organization type uh, for interpretation. And for that, I drew inspiration from Pokemon because uh, Pokemons and all the characters in many, in many video games represent uh, attributes of characters by using radar charts. So if I have a Pokemon that has a certain number of attributes and they're quantifiable, I can do the same with concepts. And that's how I represent them. We've used the FMBS uh, package for R to create very simple radar charts visualizations. Uh, I've used a uh, gray polygon to aggregate all those characteristics and to provide a semantic profile and then each um, organization type is represented with the red polygon and you can compare the shape of the red polygon against the semantic core. So, uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to uh, describe the results, well, the preliminary results, uh, rather rough results that I've obtained uh, with this method. So, as we can see here, uh, this is the semantic profile of my concept. The protruding sides of the polygon are the semantic core characteristics um, and these are the ones that I've identified. So. As I mentioned before, it has to be delivered anywhere, it has, to, it has to alleviate human suffering, address it, save human lives, prevent human suffering, which is different from alleviating it, and it, also be, it is also conceptualized as a right to dignity. So the same for impartiality. In this case, we have two prevalent characteristics here, as opposed to this rather marginal module here, uh, but it's the same principle. So it has to be delivered in a non-discriminatory way, and it has to be need-based assistance. For the concept of neutrality, it's similar again. Three characteristics that are really prominent and more marginal ones. And for independence, it's a different case. There's only one prominent characteristic within its semantic core, and that is the principle of autonomy, as I said before. Um, an interesting aspect uh, that we found is that there is indication that there is very full confusion between um, concepts. So there are characteristics that are found uh, within the um, semantic core of one concept, and they are found to be marginal um, in other concepts. So we have 24 uh, uh, tags for humanity, and there's one for anywhere within impartiality. So that indicates that there might be one organization that thinks that impartiality is a little bit like humanity. Um, and the same applies to the concept of impartiality. We have these three uh, prominent characteristics, and we have certain uh, tags found for the concept of humanity. So some organizations might be confused a little bit as to the nature of this principle. And the same applies to these other, but you know, the numbers are very low, so I think they are negligible in that case. We've compared the distribution of set characteristics across uh, organization types, and this is, here is a very um, revealing case. We have uh, red cross definitions that solely conceptualize the concept of impartiality in terms of non-discrimination, whereas definitions from state agencies, so, you know, use aid or other also, it also includes um, um, development um, organizations. They conceptualize this in terms of need-based assistance and non-discrimination. That's exactly the same, yeah. And if we add project definitions into the picture and we compare them against uh, RC definitions, we see that project adds a different dimension to, to the definitions. They also conceptualize this in terms of proportionality. It is not ne only necessary to deliver aid based on the needs, but also proportional to the needs. So that's another case of a possible uh, conceptual variation. Now, if we look at the concept of humanity, we have RC with a lot of occurrences for the, for the attributes of anywhere, alleviate human suffering, and exclusively, exclusively sorry, prevent human suffering. These are unique attributes associated to these definitions. And then when we look at state definitions in contrast, they coincide marginally with RC definitions 
but they also add two more attributes to the picture. So they talk about saving human lives, but they also uh, talk about targeting the most vulnerable. So it is clear, we can, we can just compare the definitions by looking at the shape of the, of the polygon. Corporate and business, interestingly, they coincide with RC, but they add a unique attribute. They also talk about perceive, being perceived as neutral when talking about neutrality as a principle. Not only is it important to be neutral, but also to be perceived as such. So that is very interesting that CB talk about that. And the case of um, Red Cross definitions for the concept of neutrality, they add two other interesting uh, attributes to the picture. They also talk about abiding by national law and international law, which may be at odds with other approaches found in the humanitarian domain. They are organizations that are willing to bypass uh, and they think that that's ethical to do. But in this case, the Red Cross is clear about it. For them, neutrality also includes abiding by national and international law. And I think I have two more examples. Um, we compare CD, the same set of uh, definitions, against state definitions. These talk about needs-based assistance and non-discrimination. So these characteristics, I don't know if you remember correctly, but they belong to a different concept. So state agencies may be, may be a little bit confused about this notion in comparison to the others. And finally, we have the concept of independence. All uh, organizations but one organization type, sorry, but one um, coincide on what they understand about this notion. And this is the case of federations of NGOs. They think, they also think that being independent requires them to be, to be free from political and religious affiliations, which is the same as the previous concept, but they also are more concrete about it. They believe that it also entails transferring responsibility to local organizations for the management of infrastructure, but also delivering services in a holistic approach to the most vulnerable who they are assisting. So a more concrete attribute there. What are the results that we have obtained? We have identified cases, indications of peripheral confusion. We also have um, identified indications of, of conceptual variation. We found that most marginal characteristics are provided by one type of organization. So that means that organizations may, may, be, may be a little bit idiosyncratic about the way they understand the, those notions. And we also found that definitions from RC, from Red Cross, uh, national societies and international bodies, are the ones that deviate the most for humanity, impartiality and neutrality. And also as for the visualization of results, radar charts, we believe they're partially, partially suitable. Uh, but they get too complicated when there are too many attributes. They're, diff they're difficult to interpret, and we believe that we have to look into that uh, with, mm, with, with extra care because this is going to be reflected in the way we report our results of conceptual analysis to the entry authors. What is it that we've done to wrap up? We've combined into one data set definitions and organization type metadata through corpus linguistics. We have elucidated conceptual characteristics from the free entry through qualitative analysis. And we've compared those absolute uh, frequency numbers across organization types with radar charts. What is it that we plan on doing in the future? This is an ongoing project and um, we're still working for them and we plan on working for the, for, the, for the foreseeable future. We need to include more data into the analysis. And we want to do that beyond definitions. We want to include uh, what they call knowledge-rich context. So we want to include uh, hierarchical information and non-hierarchical information about con concepts, the way they're described. Uh, we are open to collaboration. We need help to explore metrics and uh, rigorous statistical representations of concepts to study conceptual variation more rigorously. And we also want to produce interactive data visualizations to um, represent them. And finally, we, uh, we've, been, we've just granted we've just granted funding for a new project, and we're going to include uh, a new language into the picture. So it's going to be difficult for us because that presents a challenge. We, we will have to think about how to establish equivalence between the uh, different elements that we'll be analyzing. And that's it. Those are some references, some image attributions. And if you want to get in touch with us after this, you can do if you want to ask more questions. And if not, I'm open to your questions and feedback now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this interesting presentation of this, uh, also it seems to me, very challenging project. Uh, what are your questions? Back there. Thank you very much. That was, that was great. Um, Thank you. I, I'm, 
curious to know a little bit more about your coding process. Like how many coders did you have to label all of these concepts? And how did you ensure that everybody's working from the same ontology? Right, I understand. Well, this is a pilot study and I'm, I've done the coding myself, right? I've been working with my supervisor from the, uh, from the um, humanitarian, I have two bosses. I have a boss from Geneva and a boss from Granada and she's here. Uh, <laughs> So my, I'm working on that now. We we want to include more people into the coding. This is very this is preliminary as it as it can get. Uh, we are terminologists. We are used to different methods. We're used to producing resources for translators. Uh, we are, this is a completely different paradigm for us. So thank you for your question. I think I have a related question or a follow up question. If if you compare it to the Acre lexicon, for example, that we know uh, Granada so well of, the concept, the 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 words that occur here in the definitions or the def definition like context, they are very complex concepts themselves, right? So um, compared to I don't know if you have ecological data there usually quite um, uh, well-defined uh, scientific concepts, um, much less uh, wishy-washy than the concepts you encounter here. So do you get a kind of, I don't know, infinite regress where you first need to um, define those terms and those concepts before you can start to um, compare what is actually meant by them in the different definitions from the different organizations. So I want you to comment on the differences between having these very complex concepts occurring in the definitions and the context that you study, that you code, versus, I guess, more well-defined concepts that you have, I guess, in scientific publications about ecology, for example. Yeah, so that is reflected in the uh, methodologies that we use. Uh, so in my experience, when I've, uh, when I've uh, worked on, um, on the uh, environmental uh, domain, uh, you're right, um, concepts are more well, not well-defined, but they are usually expressed by highly um, specialized and very concrete um, complex nominals. Uh, and I would say that the, the, the lexical diversity is lower than that that we have in the humanitarian domain. The humanitarian domain, as you said, is very wishy-washy, and there are many ways of, of, of expressing one single thought. Uh, this is why we're using this indu indu inductive coding uh, approach, because they express the same thought in, the same, in, the very sim in a very similar way. Um, but as, as, as I mentioned, it's, this, is, this is the beginning for us. Uh, yes. I would like to, to add something about that. In, in Ecolexicon, for example, it is true that a lot of concepts are like more clear cut, but we also come across with like climate change. <laughs> we were talking uh, earlier this morning. It is an evolving concept. It, it is a multidimensional um, concept. So also in, 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 in the environment, we also come across with interesting fuzzy concepts. And this is like, our first contact with this kind of complexities. So when the Geneva Center uh, called us, it was like a happy coincidence that we, we were actually interested in starting studying like complex fuzzy concepts. And now in the humanitarian encyclopedia, they have uh, themselves chosen 129 concepts that are particularly controversial. So yeah, in that case, it's all of the concepts are fuzzy and difficult. So we had to arrange a few things in our methods and we're still creating new methods because it is a whole new thing. But we also already had the curiosity about. <laughs> Any more questions? No, I had one. Actually, you answered that in the very first uh, sentence you said. I was wondering because the encyclopedia was actually concept driven if you're going to extend it from English to other languages, but then you answer that. How many languages will be involved and what is your dream and what's the So for the plan? time, well, our dream would be, well, it's a dream. <laughs> I guess you can guess the answer, but uh, we're going to start with, uh, with Spanish uh, because, um, well, as far as, as far as we know and based on our experience, it's an under-researched uh, uh, language in terms of humanitarian studies. It's a big, it's a big part of the domain, but it is, there's a, we find that there's a very Anglo-centric uh, vision to the, uh, to the humanitarian domain. So for the time being, only Spanish. Okay. That's it for now. Well, we thank you again. Thank you very much.